Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about mapping and specifically UV mapping. And UV mapping is how a texture is projected onto an object. And it's called UV mapping because of the two axes we use in 2D are called U and V. Whereas when we have three axis in 3D, we have X, Y and Z. So I've opened up our mapping studio scene start and this is what we have. We've got a few elements in here to take a look at. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a checkerboard material. So in our material editor, I'm going to right click, go to general and create checker. And I'm going to plug this into a V-Ray material, into the diffuse. And I'm just going to make this checkerboard 10 by 10. And we can see what that does there. We just get a lot more squares to view. I'm going to select our sofa and I'm going to apply this texture to it, this material, sorry, and I'm going to show shaded in viewport. So we can see that our checkerboard has been projected onto this sofa. I'm just going to turn off the save frames and go to just perspective view. And I'm going to isolate everything other than the sofa. So we can see there's some strange edges here. And these squares are not square. And the name of the game here is to make sure we get all the squares square. So now I'm going to add a UVW map. You can find that in the modifier list down with U, or if you've created a button like earlier, you can just hit that. So what's happening here is our texture is being projected onto this sofa. So I'm moving this gizmo around by selecting gizmo from the drop down. One on the keyboard will also allow you to select that and you'll be able to move this around. So essentially what's happening is our checkerboard is being projected down onto this sofa. So currently it's a planar. I'm going to change it to box and then I'm going to change this box to 100 by 100 by 100 centimeters. And now we can see that all of these squares are square. And that's because our 10 by 10 checkerboard is being projected onto this sofa from all angles. So to demonstrate this further, I'm going to create a texture, Let's use a bitmap, and when you install 3ds Max, it comes with some textures and you can find them in program files, Autodesk, 3ds Max, Maps, and then within that Maps folder, there's a few different folders, and in here, we can open up this fabric. And I'm going to plug this into our fall off fabric from earlier. So I'm just going to drag and drop that in. I'm going to delete all of these. And then just plug these into here. And we don't need a bump map on it for now. I'm going to put a background on. And a nice little tip is we can actually pull out of here and we can add a color correction. Like we have down here, but we can actually change the hue to change the color of this map, which can be useful. We can also pull the saturation down if you like, and you can also brighten it up. Now I've never had much luck with this brightness, it always just seems to blow out the texture. So in advanced, we can actually use the gamma instead and it produces better results in my opinion. And then we can plug that into here and into our fall off map. And then we've got a yellow creamy fabric rather than bright red. So now with this fabric material selected, let's apply that to our sofa and let's take a look at what we've got. So we can see that 
this has now been applied quite evenly. If I just turn off this UV map, you'll see how that would have looked if we didn't have that applied. So we're projecting this on and the texture that we've plugged in is projecting at one meter by one meter, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. So again, if I select this gizmo and I right click and scale, this can be a quick way to get our scaling nice on our sofa. And we can also move this gizmo around. So say we wanted these edges to line up. You can then move these into position. So that's quite a quick way to line up textures.